Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, this is a talking head video, but I really wanted to get this out because AMD has officially announced their next-gen Ryzen processors. That is, their Ryzen 5000 CPUs. So yes, all the leaks and rumors were correct, at least for the naming scheme. And actually, they got quite a bit of things correct, but we're going to go over that in just a second. Now, if you're watching this and the CPUs are out, I will have links in the description below. Okay, so let's just get right to it. Starting things off, AMD went over the architecture of Zen 3, or their Ryzen 5000 CPUs, and as you can see, the rumors are actually correct in that they combine their four core modules into a single CCX that includes eight cores and 32 megabytes of L3 cache. And with that said, let's talk about how much that helps, or at least how much this architecture helps overall, and that's where the rumors were very accurate as well. As you can see, Zen 3 gets, I believe they're just saying an average IPC increase of 19%. That's huge. Yeah, geo mean of 25 workloads. It says it right here. 4 gigahertz frequency, 8 cores. So both of them are at a fixed 4 gigahertz frequency. And Zen 3 got a 19% uplift, which is pretty impressive. I mean, remember that this is still on seven nanometers, so this is not from a node change, but pretty much purely from an architectural difference. And with that out of the way, let's get right to the CPUs. As you can see, we have three, except they did announce four, but I'll get to that fourth one in a few minutes. But they announced three, the 5600X, 5800X, and 5900X. The 5900X being 12 cores, 24 threads. Well. Well, let's just put it this way, the core count remained the same, except the 5900X now gets up to 4.8 gigahertz. And of course, a lot of people are a little bit disappointed in that, and I definitely do understand. I'll go ahead and tell you that the 5950X gets to 4.9 gigahertz, so 100 megahertz from five, obviously if they could have, they likely would have. With that said, don't forget that an IPC increase is at the same frequency. So also going up in frequency helps even more. So we're talking more than 19%. And as you can see, the 5900X comes with 70 megabytes of total cache, 105 watt TDP, and the 5800X comes with 36 megabytes of cache and the same 105 watt TDP, though a boost clock of up to 4.7 gigahertz. Finally is the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a 6-core 12-thread processor, 35 megabytes of cache, 65 watt TDP, and up to 4.6 gigahertz boost. Now, bear in mind that the Ryzen 9 5900X was the main thing that they went over, so that's going to be what I talk about mostly, except a little bit later, but really quickly, let's get started. It's official, the Ryzen 9 5900X completely beat the 10900K in single threaded performance. So they've finally done it. Yes, this is Cinebench. I know a lot of people talk about, you know, oh, Ryzen is just a Cinebench CPU, but remember that Intel also used Cinebench when they won at it. So either way, this is massive single threaded performance, at least in Cinebench, because once again, IPC increase is a per application thing. But regardless, it wins in single core performance here, and I think you'll find that it likely wins mostly overall. And what's interesting is that this is a 12 core CPU, so it's better at single core performance versus a 10 core. Therefore, the multi-core performance is gonna be that much better. Anyway, moving on, let's talk gaming. The number one thing, I kinda called it before the uh, stream, for those who saw my stream, that this was gonna be a big focus on gaming because in the title it even said gaming. So clearly this was going to be the big talking point, which is pretty rare for an AMD Ryzen announcement. And obviously that told me that we may actually see Ryzen beat Intel at gaming performance. But starting things off, you can see that it gets a massive, massive performance increase over their last generation 3900 XT. This is 1080p resolution. So once again, what they're doing is, uh, this is a CPU benchmark because when you take a middle range, mid, you know, middle of the road GPU, typically you'll see almost no difference because the GPU is the bottleneck. Though I will say with the RTX 3000 series, that looks like it may change just a bit because they're so much more powerful, which actually means that this is the best time for AMD to beat Intel at gaming. To which it looks like they do, though of course, 
with the caveat that as always these are first party benchmarks so we always do like to wait for third party reviews but according to AMD this is versus the 10900K, it looks like Ryzen is the winner. We have eSports games, it's beating at 19%, 21%. Now, I will say that they did throw in one loss, although it's only by 3%. Though, of course, they only won here by 1%, but remember that this is versus the 10900K. This is supposed to be the best, the most powerful gaming CPU, and Ryzen beats it. So they've finally done it. Something that they flat have not been able to do, AMD's Ryzen CPU, as of yet, the 5900X is the fastest gaming CPU. Once again, at least according to this, but they said it themselves and they even said, hey, seriously, you're going to test it. It's going to say the same results, basically. So they're saying this is the fastest gaming CPU on the market, which is huge because that's what Intel has been able to hold on to this entire time. And you know that if they're faster at that, they're definitely going to be much faster at multi-threaded workloads. Anyway, moving on, we have the 5950X, which is the 16-core, 32-thread monster, also with a 105-watt TDP, which is a bit odd, but 4.9 gigahertz boost, 100 megahertz away. Bit of a disappointment, but that is what most of the rumors said. So they were once again accurate. And next up, we can see that it completely crushes the 10,900K in content creation, though, of course, that would be expected. And moving on, at the end, we finally have availability, pricing, and all of that good stuff. Now, as you can see, they've gone up in pricing. We have the Ryzen 9 5900X, $50 more, actually. I believe that they're all $50 more across the board. Now, obviously that does suck. It would have been a much better win if it stayed the same, but at the same time, the 5900X completely crushes the 10,900K, not necessarily in gaming, but if it does that much better in gaming, it's definitely going to crush it in professional workloads. So for a lot of people, $50 more for massive increase in that is definitely gonna be worth it. I think it's really gonna come down to pricing of the 5800X and 5600X to really determine if this is a massive success, but I really don't think AMD is gonna have a problem selling at this. This pretty much officially makes them the absolute winner at everything. So charging a bit more is about what you would expect, but of course, this is why we also want Intel to come back with what they have, and this continuous fight has to happen. As for availability, you can see it is November 5th, so a little bit later than what we thought, but not too, too far from now, unfortunately. This is not a hard release, so this is just the announcement, but not too, too far off. Finally, we have the 5950X, which I believe is just $50 more versus the 3950X. And of course, this isn't really made for gaming, although, you know, uh, the performance is a bit better in games, but I would argue this is definitely for uh, creators, professional workloads, and if you could get out of the 3950X, you know, to make it worth it, that $50 more will definitely be worth it. And this is also going to be available on November 5th. So, all in all, massively impressive. AMD has finally done it. They are the leader in CPUs, given all of these benchmarks that they've shown do end up being accurate. This makes them the winner, period. Though they are now a bit more expensive than Intel. Well, their MSRP, though their actual pricing can be quite a bit more. So we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, I definitely think that this was a win for AMD. Really impressive. Um, they also discussed just a bit on their GPUs. I'm probably going to be doing a video on that as well, but that's going to take me a little while. Either way, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.